What's up, you fam? We're glad you've joined us for worship from wherever you're at. Today's a special occasion. At least once a year, we try to gather the entire church body together, whether it's traditional or contemporary services, in one place to celebrate as one body. Now, we know that you can't physically be with us, but that doesn't make you any less a part of our body, our family. We love you and appreciate you. And today we have a special service with a special message. I invite you to gather everybody around the couch if you're at home together. Now let's worship together with some songs. There's a song that stirs the spirit And it calls the heart to life It's an anthem in the making Can you feel it start to rise? Can you hear the generations getting louder over time? Every son and every daughter singing out into the night. Cause it's not time to be silent. Don't you dare hide your light. There's a world outside your window. So don't let it pass you by. Lift your hands to the heavens lift your voice to the sky praise the lord of all creation let his name be lifted high From the palace to the streets, I can feel that trumpet pulsing and it's calling you and me. I can hear the world awaken, oh the sound is heavenly. Every tribe and every nation singing Jesus I believe. Cause it's not time to be silent, don't you dare. Your light. There's a world outside your window, so don't let it pass you by. Lift your hands to the heavens, lift your voice to the sky. Praise the Lord of all creation, let his name be lifted high. Let it pass you by. 
lift your hands to the heavens, lift your voice to the sky. Praise the Lord of all creation, let his name be lifted high. Amazing grace, how sweet. That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see It was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been saved promise good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion me as long as life endures my chains are gone So now we come to a time of communion. I'll give you a second to grab whatever you were able to get at home, with juice, crackers, bread, anything. Gather it together, gather around, and we'll celebrate communion together in a second. So now that you have those things, 
Remember, communion is for us to remember what Christ did for us on the cross, the sacrifice He made with His body and His blood to cleanse us from our sin and to bring us back in good standing with the Father so that if we put our hope in Christ, we have eternal life with Him. So go ahead and take whatever you have, that bread or those crackers, partake of that bread with me. And when you're done with that, take the juice or whatever you might have and go ahead and partake with that and be reminded of Christ's blood shed for us to redeem us from our sins. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the gift that you gave that there's no possible way we could ever repay. Help us, Lord, to be mindful of what you've done for us and the call for us to spread the good news of hope in you throughout the world, especially where you've placed us to be. Help us, Lord, to live differently, to be different, to encourage one another, and to do the work that you've designed us especially for, right where we are. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. into a room and then went, oh, what what was that? I have done that so many times where I don't even remember what I was walking to do and I'll come back in and Marcy, did you hear me say what I was going to do? You know, when you lose focus on something small like that, consequence is pretty minor, but when you lose focus on life, Man, the consequences can be pretty big. You know, it is easy to get distracted in life by by the good and by the bad. And there's all kinds of neutral in there that can just grab your attention as well. And here's what I want to challenge you with as we start here today, is that God invites you to be a part of his story. Now, now I know that sometimes we can look at a point like that and say, oh yeah, God invites the world and he invites my neighbors and my grandmother or, no, I want this to be personalized to you. God invites you. He's not a distant and non-caring God. He actually wants the best for you. He created the world and he created us and And that means he created you as well. And so let me challenge you that he wants the best and he has invited you to be a part of his story. As we begin, I want to just share quickly three B's with you. The first part of this whole idea that they're all interacting and they're going to be dependent on each other is that we start out with believe. You know, God has invited us into a story and we need to believe in him, obviously. We need to believe in his son. And and I want to challenge you. What do you believe in? I mean, what are you grounded in? I mean, And are you growing in that belief? Are you investing in it? So many who would call themselves believers aren't really doing any of that. See, the very term is, it's not a matter of generalized belief. It implies follower in the Bible that it's an active believing. And so second of all, belong. You know, God wants you to belong to his family where he's adopted you as his own. And so let me ask you, are you connected to the family? Are you connected to other Christians? Hey, do you belong? Because growth comes in community. You know, every survey shows that we do not grow on our own. 
And so if you're new with us, if you've just been tuning in for a while, I want you to understand God has invited you to be a part of a family of God and online as well. You're part of a greater family, the family of God, and you need to connect with those around you too. Now, last of all, bless. You realize you are blessed. I, for so long in my life, I, I would think, yeah, others are blessed, and I'm just kind of got the raw end of the stick, and, and that's often our focus, but I want to challenge you you are blessed. We all are blessed. And we're going to unpack that today. And here's the real question. Are you blessing others? See, it's essential for us to bless others. And I am blessed to be a blessing, not just for an hour on Sunday, but it's a lifestyle. Now, one out of two or three of these does not work. You know, these are all together. We must believe in him and to believe and not belong makes zero biblical sense. And to believe and belong and not be blessing others, that makes no sense. It does not work. Now, here's the thing. If, if, if not careful, we tend to pull away and where we believe and we might somewhat belong, but we're not blessing anybody in the world. And that'd be like a monastic culture where they pull away, they disconnect from the world and live in a cave. But here's the crazy thing. That's not holy. That's not better. That's not God's way. In fact, the Bible never invites us to do that. God's plan is to believe in him to believe in who he is and to interact with him as a way of life and to belong together as the body of Christ. And then together we bless the world and those around us. So as we jump into today, I'm gonna give a little setting on the scripture I wanna unpack. It's in Matthew chapter 25, if you wanna read and along with us, you can turn there. But the setting is this, Jesus has been asked a question. And it's basically, when is it all going to end? When is this earth going to come to an end? When is God coming back? And he tells three stories. Now, the three stories kind of go bridge over 24 and chapter 25. The first one has to do with bridesmaids and the groom. And it's a story of expectation. When is the groom going to arrive? And that we ought to be expectant. The second is, what do we do while we're waiting? And we're going to spend some time in that story. And it has to do with three servants and the master. The third one is that of the sheep and the goats. Now, trust me. You want to be on the side of the sheep here. Uh, now, Jesus, he tells this story in Matthew chapter 25, and he basically is going to illustrate the kingdom of heaven. He's trying to describe this story as giving an illustration for you to understand and see a picture into what God has called us to. He says there's this guy, he goes on a long trip, but before he does, he pulls it together, three servants, and, and, and he gives them according to their ability three different deviations of bags. He brings one in, gives him five bags of silver. And no instructions, doesn't tell him when he's gonna return. He just gives him five bags of silver. The other one, he gives two bags of silver. And to the last, he gives one bag of silver. Now, I know right off at the beginning of the story, that might kind of rub some of us wrong because we're like, well, isn't everybody created equal? I mean, why didn't he give 2.3 to each of them? You gotta remember, God's God, we're not, we don't get to write the story. So he says, you know, we're all a little bit different. He gives this to all of them. Now, here's the thing. After a long time, he comes back from his trip and he says, okay, guys, come on in. I wanna, I wanna find out basically what you've done with the money I gave you. So, he calls in the one with five, and he's like, what's happened? Well, the guy with five comes in, and he says, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. Now, the master was full of praise, and he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. Now, I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. He brings in the next one with two. The same thing happens. I brought two more. Well done. It's really good. Then the one bag guy comes in, and he approaches this very differently. He says, Master, I knew you were a harsh man harvesting crops you didn't plan. And 
You gather crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Here's your money back. Well, the master replies, pretty harsh, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops that I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. And then he ordered him, take the money from this servant, give it to the one with 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. And they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even with what little they have, it'll be given away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, this is one of those stories that makes me a little uncomfortable. I mean, the first I've already brought up, aren't we all equal? Why didn't he give 2.3? You know, you know as well as I do, we're all different. We have different abilities, different families, different experiences, I mean, different opportunities. I have some friends that are five talent guys, and I know it. I'm like, I'm amazed at their knowledge, their ability, their experience in life. Most of you are a little more probably like me when you say, oh, I'm more like a one talent guy, maybe a 1.5 talent guy, you know, but here's another part I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with because these are trusted servants. They're like family here, so to speak. He leaves them this money and he gives them no instruction and he doesn't say when he's going to be back. That makes me uncomfortable, but you got to understand there's a lot of parallels between God and us here in the story. See, here's the thing. God has invited us into his story. And when it comes down to it, he's given us each a blessing. He's given us gifts. And I'm so grateful he's entrusted this to us. We don't know when he's going to come back. We don't have a lot of say in that, but he's he's challenged us to be faithful until he does. Now, here's the thing. I want to ask you just a simple question. What are you doing with your life? Your life is on loan. My life is a loan from God he's given me. And that's what being a steward with my life is all about. There are a lot of things that will stop me from really stepping into the story. And I I just thought about that. What are our story stoppers, in fact? Because if not careful, we'll look around and go, That guy is more gifted than me. Well, that person has been given more opportunity. Well, parents helped him out. And well, she got, you know, just the silver platter and the silver spoon in life. And the result is we can have a lot in common with the one bag failure. And I don't want to be that. You know, right off, you look in verse 18, he's like, this is a hard man, he's unfair, you're mean, and so I buried it, here's your money back. You know, he didn't fail because he lost it, he failed because he didn't use it. And so, if I were to ask, I'm not going to, because, I mean, honestly, right now, online, I wouldn't see your hand anyway. Hey, if I say, do you want to invest your life? Most hands would be going up in living rooms all over. And they'd just go, well, yeah, I want, I want my life to make a difference. I want to invest my life. But if I, right after that, ask you another clarifying question, how many of you feel that you are making a difference? That's where a lot of hands are all going to come down. You know, Ted Ingstrom says this, I never met a person who was planning on a mediocre life, but I've met a lot of mediocre people. That, oh, it kind of hurts. And why is it that we settle for less? I mean, why is that? Well, I pulled out just kind of three things that I saw this guy, this wicked and lazy servant, as he called him, that I, that I pulled, that I said, you know what, that could really impact me. I mean, first of all, he hit it, he took care of himself, and he wasn't even worried about the master. He was worried about himself. And I just want to sum that up with comfort. I, I think that we take care of us and we're comfortable. We have our little comfort zone and we just stay in that. And so to do something for you, to do something for them, to do something for God, if I have to get up out of my seat, if I have to step out of my, you know, I don't really like leaving my circle. This is where I want to be. 
You know, we don't change until we're forced to. We don't risk unless we have to. We don't engage until we're pushed to. We just don't grow. But, you know, we all have the someday mindset. You do as, just like I do. Someday I'm going to serve. Someday I'm going to grow. Someday I'm going to be a man of faith. Someday I'm going to be a good family person. Someday I'm... Well, someday is going to come and it's going to be the day that you take your last breath and there's going to be a funeral and people will actually talk about what mattered most to you, what mattered most to me. Please don't let comfort keep you from stepping out. God has more for me. He has more for you. He also just said something pretty harsh to the guy. He called him lazy. Laziness here in verse 26. The perspective was, well, easier is better. I found most of the time easy is not better. Easy is not the best. He calls him wicked and lazy because he's put no energy into it, no effort. He digs a hole and buries it. That's it. Everything in life that's worth anything takes effort. Hey, whether it be exercise, whether it be dieting, whether it be education, whether it be work, whether it be family, relationships, I mean, my faith, it takes effort. And here's the thing, God has gifted you with passion, ability, and experience. Some of that has been good, and I know some of that has been bad. It's been in my life, good and bad. It's been good and bad in your life as well. But God doesn't waste the good or the bad. He wants to use that to bless others around us that we might serve others. And here's the thing, it will not be convenient. It will not be easy. It's going to take some effort. Well, here's, I think, one of the ones that debilitates us the most. It's fear. Fear just holds us back. It, he, that was the perspective of this guy. It was his only choice he sees. I mean, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of winning or is it a losing? Is it succeeding? Is it failing? Is it a disappointing others? Is it, is it what people think of you? Fear can be so disabling. Let me give you just kind of a, a little bit of a humorous stat to me. When I go out into the ocean, let me give you a little setting. My heart just thuds in its chest as I swim. I always go out. I love to get out. I've, I've, I've surfed a couple of times. I'm the world's worst surfer, um, but, I, but I, I have rode a couple of small waves in. But while I'm out there waiting for a wave that looks like it's good, I'm scared to let my feet dangle in the water. I'm scared a lot of, I'm like, Jaws is gonna come get me. But here's the truth. You realize on average, there's 50 to 70 shark attacks worldwide, 50 to 70. And you're like, wow, that's, un no, 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 hold on. About 10 of them on average will die. Now, let's just compare that to two other statistics. You know how many people die annually from smoking? 8.7 million people die of smoking. Now, what about auto accidents? 1.3 million people die in auto accidents. So, the next time you are at the beach and someone yells, shark, and everybody runs out of the water, there's gonna be a lot of people picking up their cigarette, jumping into their car, and what should they really be afraid of? It's probably not the shark as much as what they're doing next. Here's the point. We fear things that are often the wrong things. Let me give you a little side thought in here. I believe that the master here would have rewarded the one talent guy if he had just tried something and still failed. And his failure was doing nothing. Let me just switch the story for just a moment. My grandpa on my dad's side, he, uh, I'm just, I'm going to say straight up, uh, I, I don't mean in a dishonoring way, but he was a hard man. He was brought up in a generation that wasn't taught to say, I love you, wasn't taught to show or express that. He was a guy who held grudges. He was tough. He was a scary rancher and farmer that you didn't want to cross. I don't remember one time as I grew up going to his house, being around him for holidays and everything. I don't remember one time he ever said, I love you. Somehow, 
My dad, growing up with that father, he heard almost no love. He became one of the most loving men I have I've ever seen. Not afraid to express it, quick to share, quick to love. Just incredible. Now, I don't know what kind of earthly dad you have. I don't know if he's expressed love to you well or not at all or somewhere in between. And some of you, just to be blunt, have some rotten, some rotten stories. And I'm sorry for that. But please hear me. God, your heavenly Father, loves you. You know, I want you to hear right now him saying to you, your name, I love you. He says that again and again to us in a multitude of ways as we cry out, where are you, God? And I can't understand, I don't know. He says, I love you over and over and over. He screams it through the cross. He gives it to us through life and through blessing and watching over us and giving us a place that he's gonna take all who would just put their trust in him that screams, I love you. And here's the thing. He wants you to belong to his family. He wants to adopt you in. And he wants to use you to minister to one more, to love one more and one more. You're blessed to be a blessing. I know hurt screams really loud and so sometimes we press down the blessing there is blessing there if you'll just admit it. You know, if you read on, Jesus gives the third account and it's the sheep and the goats that I mentioned earlier. And he says basically he's gonna divide us all into either sheep or goats one day. And when it comes down to it, you wanna be on the side of the sheep and the goats are the obstinate, the stubborn, the saying, no, I reject you, God, in the story. Now, Jesus puts it in a really interesting way. He sums this up in verse 35. He says, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. And they're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. I, I didn't do that for you. What are you talking about? Jesus saying, this is the sheep responding to this wonderful declaration that he's made. And then he says this, the king will say to him, I tell you the truth. When you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. I wanna challenge you to look at that word one. When you do it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you're doing it for who? You're doing it for Jesus himself. So whether you're a five talent, whether you're a two talent, whether you're a one talent, who is your one? That's what this whole love the little apple, and yeah, Manhattan is known as the little apple. I don't know where you are right now, but I do know this. There are people around you who are hurting that Jesus has commissioned you as your one. Are you seeing them? Do you listen to them? Do you love them? That's your choice, whether to be invited into the story and then respond or be invited into the story and just sit back and go, nope, I'm, I'm too afraid. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of comfortable right now. I'm just plain lazy, possibly. Please, that one matters. And you might be the only one who could ever reach them. Will you love them? Will you reach out? It might not be convenient. It's, in fact, I'll say it won't be convenient but it's worth it. I'm gonna say a prayer and I just wanna ask for you to humbly join with me. Wherever you are, whatever's going on, would you just kind of shut out some of the noise, put your phone to the side or whatever it is and just humbly say, oh God, who's my one? Lord, somebody has loved me enough to invest in me in life and, and I ask in Jesus' name that you would work in me to bless others. And I know that there are so many who are watching and listening right now who, who think that they can't make a difference. They think that 
They're not enough, but you are enough, and you want to change this world through us. And I say thank you for the grace you've given me. Thank you for inviting me into the story. And God, help them to hear that you want to use them. Please, Lord, bring to mind their one. Don't let them stay back in their comfort zone, but may they reach out and be used as an instrument of God's grace, your grace, to change their, someone's life. It's in the name above all names, the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Hey, I wanna challenge you to join with us as we just sing a song, and it's for God so loved the world. Now, here's the thing, as we do, don't, don't push that off and that God loved, yeah, them, God loves you. Please hear that and let it flow through you to someone else. Come to the well that never runs dry Drink of the water, come and thirst no more Come all you sinners, come find his mercy Come to the table, he will satisfy Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for So love the world that he gave us is one and known be son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. Open arms For God so loved The world that he gave us It one and known His son to save us Whoever believes in him Will live forever The power of hell Forever defeated Now it is well I'm walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him. For the wonders of His love Praise God, praise God From whom all blessings flow Praise Him, praise Him For the wonders of His love His amazing love For God so loved the world that He gave us He's one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I walk in freedom for God so long. God so love the world. failures bring your addictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting god so loved the world we are so glad you've joined us today for this special edition of worship together remember we are one body one body in christ all over the place with many parts, designed to worship and bring people together to know Him and make Him known. If you need anything, prayer, resources, or support, head to university.church/ufam or connect with us through the UCC Hub app.
We love you. We're praying for you. And together, let's love God, people, and the world.